Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. And we're out here in uh, Yankerville, North Carolina. Yes, a little plug there for uh, Crank Yankers. It's a big premiere tonight, Drew. Oh, that's right. Big season two premiere uh, going on 10 o'clock right now, Comedy Central. Crank Yankers. My my puppet. Uh, In due time, in due time, (laughs) my precious. So what you people need to do is you need to turn on Comedy Central right now and uh, go ahead and turn the sound up too, and you okay. we'll leave this show on too. It's multitasking. You got two right, ears. If somebody has Crank Anchors playing while we're talking to them on the phone, you can't yell at them for having the TV up. No, I won't. Uh, no, but uh, but you got to do it early because uh, my bit's starting first tonight. I think. Oh really? So, uh, oh yeah. Bertram? Yeah, big big new season. Yeah. So uh, we're over here in. Uh, where are we in, like uh, Pawtucket or something? Wilmington, North Carolina. Wilmington, North Carolina. We're doing Dawson's Creek. Uh, we've been a little sleep deprived. Mm-hmm. At least I have. No, I have to. Drew has as well. Because uh, with the time difference, we're doing the show from uh, 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. out here. And then we're getting picked up about 9.30 in the morning. And 9.30 in the morning sounds like a reasonable pickup. And I think for the Dawson's Creek people, it is. A break for them. Except for we're going to bed at four o'clock, yeah. and I'm going on day number three of this. Now they did say to us, "Don't worry, they'll uh, get progressively later the pickup times." Yeah, they apologized for yesterday. They said, "Oh, dude, don't worry. The next few days, much later." The pickup times are going to get later as the days wear on. But uh, I got picked up at nine forty-five on uh, Monday. I got picked up at nine forty today. Then we're getting picked up at uh, nine fifteen tomorrow. Although we. Wrestled it back. Nine thirty to nine thirty. <laughs> like like it, my life depended That's upon huge. it. <laughs> They're like, no. <laughs> it's always great, Drew and I. Drew, how many of these conversations have you heard me have <laughs> in our short relationship? About fifteen minutes a time. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, Larry, let me talk to you. You got a second? Yeah. <laughs> I hate to bother you. I know you're an executive producer. Uh, Pick up time says uh, nine eighteen uh, for me. You're allowing uh, what twenty twenty four minutes for hair makeup. Yeah, see, I only probably need about eight minutes makeup, uh, three minutes hair, and two minutes wardrobe. Uh, we're about 17 minutes, so if we could push that up to you, you 9, part, 27 proce- and a half. Yeah, that, that's basically how it goes. Except this part that precedes that, which is, God damn it, if there's just a bunch of hanging around, you'll hear from me. Well, I like, I, to, I like to instill a little fear yeah, into them, which right. is... I will be here whenever you yes, want me to be here. If you want me here at 6 to work at 6.05, I'll be here at 6. But but if it's to if, be here at 9.30 If, if I'm hanging 12, around for an hour to get in goddamn hair and makeup, yeah. I'm going to be pissed. Yeah, yeah. I like to lay that out. Yeah. Then let them make their decision now with my pissed thing looming over them, yeah. although and it never that, seems we, to. We earned an extra 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Still getting picked up earlier tomorrow than we got picked up uh, on Monday or, or Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. by the way. Yeah. So we're, we're Sunday work, or Monday. We're working. Oh, yeah, Sunday or Monday. Yeah, we're all screwed up. Well, what day is Tuesday. it? Tuesday. Well, Why did I get picked up? Why? How did I work two days already and it's you Tuesday? You got here Sunday. I got here Monday. Yeah, but I got picked up Monday, Tuesday. I'm sorry. You got, I beg your pardon. Jackass. You're right. I beg your pardon. How dare you try to gaslight me when I, you I was, know I my, just my we're, brain is frail? You're right. We're all screwed up. All right, and here's the other thing that's uh, going to be the uh, cherry on top of the cake. Yeah. Uh, they were going to fly me out of here at, like, I was leaving at 2 in the afternoon on Friday. Yeah. And I said to, uh, to my peeps, you know. Will that down? I said to my I said to my assistant, who I like to call my secretary, huh. but my wife says that's derogatory. <laughs> but I'm like, would you rather be a secretary or assistant? I guess assistants become like a professional. Secretary, it seems at least like you're typing. Yeah. Assistant is like, hey, uh, uh, baby, go pick up my dry cleaning and grab me a Starbucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, I said, what time am I flying out on Friday? It's 2 o'clock. It's 2 o'clock. At, why? I'll just sort of mill around the hotel for a couple hours waiting. In a, let's get going. I, I don't want to get back to L.A. Friday night. I want to get there. You know, with the you're day. not filming anything on Friday. And I'm not doing anything on Friday. Yeah. And I and I go, eh, if, you know, who cares if i got to get up and get out? I'll just sleep on the plane, right. whatever. So I, finally the earliest flight out of uh, Wilmington. So I just got the uh, travel itinerary. So we go to bed at 4? 6. 
I'm getting picked up at five. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm getting picked up at five. <laughs> That'll be on Friday too. Oh when I'm, when I'm at, I'm just gonna. I think you I'll, got I'll just, your wish. Yeah, I really did. Uh. You gotta be careful uh, what you ask for. And uh, tomorrow night, actually. <clears throat> and the next night, we did. Drew was uh, relentlessly uh, wrangling guests, as per uh, Ann's request to be on this show from Dawson's Creek. Problem is, is they're uh, sane human beings who have uh, jobs. You have jobs in the morning. They have they have call times earlier than ours. I mean, the girls are getting in at seven thirty in the morning and stuff like that. I mean, like Katie Holmes. If you look on the uh, Ugh. Breakdown sheet. It says like you know, Katie Holmes, seven forty-five in the morning. Wow. You know, call time. Yeah. So they'll be goddamn if they're going to be sitting here with uh, us two retards at three a.m. Right, knowing they got a full day or whatever. But we, Drew was working on it relentlessly, and so far he has uh, he has a catering chick and one of the grips. I think coming in tomorrow night. Talk about what it's like to cook for Katie Holmes. No, we, we got Busy Phillips coming tomorrow. Busy Phillips is and. Uh, She's just a hot, vivacious blonde who really digs through, by the way. And she likes the show. She's been on the show by well, now. Well, because you're on the show. I see. Mm -hmm. And then um, mm -hmm. Michelle Phillip. Michelle, uh, Michelle Williams comes with her. Oh, yeah. Now, she's one of the original cast members. Right. And, uh, and uh, a big star, too. And right. then, uh, and then uh, Katie... Uh, Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes coming in with uh, the guys directing. Uh, Joshua. Joshua. Original cast, Joshua. Hey, he's cute. Jackson. Jackson, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it's one of the mighty ducks or something like that. <laughs> hey, good kid, good kid. 24, Boston Drew's old ass around the set. Let's feel good. Drew, what were you doing at 24? Uh, third year medical school. Ah, yeah, yeah, I guess. Same yeah. here. How about you? Th uh, third year, um, ditch or carpet? I was a glorified goomper. I'd work my way up from uh, labor to glorified goomper in the construction realm by uh, 23. Sleeping on a futon with my buddy the Wheeze in a one-bedroom apartment in North Hollywood. Yeah, good times. All right, big crank yankers tonight. Who do we got on? Brittany, 16. Hello? Brittany? Yeah? Can you hear me? What's up? Yeah. Yep. Oh, hey, I'm 16, right? Well, my friend just recently told me he's in love with me. And, like, I don't know if I... Because I have a girlfriend, right? Hmm. Well, and... Did you know that? Is a boyfriend or a girlfriend friend? Girlfriend no, friend. No, but the first friend, the one that said they're in love with you. Um, like he's just a friend friend. He, okay. Yeah. Does he know you're gay? Yeah, we're all friends. Okay, so he and knows you're lesbian. Bye. You're bye. Okay. Yes. <laughs> all right, so what? Okay. Florida. What do you need us for? <laughs> well, she likes him as well. All right. And I don't want to hurt her because I really love her. But I like this guy as well. And she's cool if I have a boyfriend. And I'm cool if she has a boyfriend. But I don't know if I should, like, try to further the relationship between me and him. Because in the long run, it might end up hurting her because I think she I mean, still has, like, feelings. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Screwball. Oh, Drew. Right? Yeah. Drew's sleep deprived. He's very angry. But you know it's going to hurt her. She's made it clear to you this is some guy she's interested in. If you cared about your girlfriend, you wouldn't do this. Not only that, but if she, you cared about your... She calls him an asshole and says how much she hates him. And then the I next day... Said, it's, she's into it's, him. The next day it's, oh, he's so cute and I wish he'd go out with me and blah da All right, listen. I didn't want to get into this. Brittany, what's wrong with you? What happened to you? What do you mean? Somebody Why is who, who, who scrambled your antenna? Like, broke my heart or something? No. no sexual abuse, physical abuse. I was raised when I was 12, but... When you're 12. How, what about before that? Where's your dad? My dad lives in Tennessee. When uh -huh. did the hell were you when he left? Oh, I just now moved in with my mom this year. You were living with your dad in Tennessee before this? Mm-hmm. Why weren't you living with your mom? Long, um, when I was little, my mom's husband, not my dad, new husband abused me and my brother. All right, well, uh, that was our initial question, Brittany. Who abused you? Oh, my right. bad. So your stepdad? Your stepdad. Yeah. All right, that's why you're hanging around with a bunch of screwballs. You have no boundaries. Your sexual identity is all sort of confused. Right, this is just a mess. You, 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 It's not cool to have a relationship with somebody and then just bring somebody, a third person in. You, you say you're cool with that. That's BS. What you're cool with is chaos. Stepfather. And that's what you're creating by bringing all these other people into your relationships. 
and you're hurting your girlfriend. It's explicitly somebody that you know she's got a lot of feelings about. All right, but look, look Brittany's going to have many years of chaos. Yeah. I mean, she she went from Tennessee to Florida for Christ's sake. Oh but my God. There's not many. You can't. It's hard to slide down from Tennessee. <laughs> Florida's one of the only things underneath Tennessee. Yeah. But Brittany, here's what I need you to do. I need yeah. you to not get pregnant. Because I'm just on damage. Lesbian. I'm on the damage lesbian. control at this point. Hopefully, we'll I know, but she's bisexual too. I mean, Drew, don't we have to go on damage control at a certain point yes. in society? Which oh is, yes. I'm sorry for what happened to Brittany with her horrible stepfather, and God knows her mom's a witch and all that kind of stuff. No, you need to my, not. My mom's you, not a witch. She is. She married a. She married a guy, but it's not her fault because someone abused her before. Right. So. She was sexually yeah, abused she was too. For 14 years. Mm, of course. Shocking. Course. But here's what you need to do, no, Brittany. Listen to me. You know I'm a genius, right? Yeah. You need to not get pregnant. You need to not screw your life up with drugs and substances. You need to, you know, graduate, go to college, or get a job at least, and just don't F things up, and get some therapy for the abuse you've suffered, and do not make a life of chaos for yourself like all those other Floridians around you. You understand? You got that? Okay. Don't be yeah. one of those people with the sofa on the porch. All right. All right. All right. This is now Nels, fourteen. Yeah. Hey. 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 Um, I today I asked this girl out, and yeah. uh, she told me that she had to think about it. About going out? Yeah, like being yeah. my my girlfriend. Well, right. being girlfriend is different than going out, right? Well, he asked her to go steady, right? No. What did you exactly? What what words came out of your mouth? Do you want I'm to gonna go? be, I'm I'm gonna be the girl. I'm gonna be the girl. Okay. All right. You ready? And action. Uh, do you want to go out with me? Fresh! And then I smack him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's got quite a sense of humor there. I, I'll tell you, I, I should get credit, I mean, A, for being a comedic genius, but B, for trudging on in the face of uh, you with the puss on, producer Ann with the puss on, just looking at an aquarium full of groupers. No audience whatsoever. Even Even the kids that I tutor, the, the ones that I mentor over the phone... Still, no, no love for the ace man. Yeah, well. All right, so I'm anyway. I'm really, really hard in here, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> so you asked her uh, You asked her if she wanted to go out, and she said you had to think about it. You're a big boy. Yeah, and yeah. she kind of, uh, she it, it was kind of like a sympathetic hug after that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure whether, like, yeah. I want to know what well, here's, we Well, here's are. the thing. <laughs> here, here's the thing. She's 14. Maybe she doesn't really, A, first of all, obviously she doesn't have a lot of experience dealing with being asked out, so she doesn't have a lot of sort of social skill with this. And secondly, 14, maybe she wants to decide if she's really kind of ready to go out. Drew, really? really? Yeah, well, I have, to, I have to think about it. It's not I, the greatest response. No, did she say she'd get back to you? or? No, she just told me that she had to think about it. I, like, talked to some of my friends, and yeah. some of them said that that was kind of like a big no. And then other people, like, told me that I should wait a couple days. And it's like, she doesn't get back to me in like a couple days and just forget about her. I agree with that. Yeah, there you go. 100%. All right? Okay. All right. Good times. All right. Yeah. Hey, good times. Good good times. times. Oh, you know, I'm like a I'm like a comedic hero over there on the set of Dawson's Creek, Drew. Yeah, I know. You're yeah, genius. Crap. They, they, they appreciate laughing, it. Yeah. Everyone's laughing. Audience Everyone is appreciates me. Everyone their lips, trying to keep the quiet. Oh, the come set. up with the compliments there, and then it's uh, right back into reality on this radio show. Adam, how long have you been over there for? How many days? The Creek? <laughs> uh, two, two days. I laughed for at least the first four days I worked here, at least. Did you? Yeah. Oh, all right. I was all right, hard. See, see the point is, by Thursday. Friday, yeah, Thursday, Friday, they're not going to be interested in you anymore. Yeah, well, that's all right. That's that's all right because it's when You're I out of here. I get my forty-five minutes sleep and hop on my plane. Lewis. Yeah. What's up? What's up? Fifteen-year-old. Yeah. Hold on a second, Lewis. Adam, virgin? Yes or no? No. Okay. Keep going. What's up? Um. That um. Uh. What was the question? Uh. That uh. Like when I first. <laughs> With the girl, or get rubbed up on, or hold her hands like I get an erection. Mm hmm. That's nice. 15. You no, know, like I can't, like I try to control it, but I can't. Right. Yeah. Those are not things you can control. Don't worry, time will take care of it. That's right. Time and uh, father time. Booze and drugs. Oh, yeah, that'll take care of it too, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, Lewis? All right. So, there's no problem there. Wear heavy jeans. All right. Right? Yeah. All right, thanks. <laughs> Disappointed. Yeah, don't wear those uh, genie parachute pants. 
Now, Drew, remember you just get erections all the time for no reason? Uh, yeah. I haven't got one of those in a while. No. Had that one, you know, I got that, I got that morning one going. Yeah, yeah. Even that's not around so much anymore. Really? Hey, we wait. Well, I believe, um, I believe someone steals mine in the night. Oh. I don't believe it's a vascular thing. Yeah, it's aging. I believe. Uh, yeah, it's Father Time still out of front of me. Like the uh, boner boogeyman <laughs> <laughs> comes out from under my bed and steals it. Maybe it's my theory. Jessica, sixteen. Me? Yeah. Hi. Hey. Um. Okay. First of all, I love the show. Like seriously, I was listening to you guys the night I lost my virginity. Um, oh my goodness! When was that? Huh? Why weren't we discouraging you from doing that? That was no, seven well, years not, ago. Not Adam Rackman was on at the time. <laughs> oh, Adam was encouraging it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I was just wondering, like, what prompts masochistic behavior? Hmm. Abuse? Uh, yeah, physical abuse, typically. Like, because, okay, like, my dad, like, doesn't live with me, and, like, I like I kind of have, like, <laughs> a series of problems, but, like, I, I just, like, I don't really know why I... Like, I'm attracted to such, like, abusive relationships and, like, fantasize about, like, being beaten and stuff like that. Oh, boy. Well, did you ever get beaten before? No. Never? No. Never? No. No one ever raised a hand to you? No. All right. I think our connection's a little crappy, and it doesn't help that Drew asked the same question 14 times. <laughs> but uh, your dad cut out when you were young? Well, like, I, I'm still, like, in touch with him and stuff like that, but he, uh, like, I'm close to him, and I talk to him all the time, and I see him somewhat frequently, but, like, he does live kind of far away from me, and, like, I've had issues with that, like, all my life. He left yeah. when I was, like, eight. Why? Um, like, job stuff, and then he ended up becoming an actor, so now he just kind of stayed there. Oh, no. In Hollywood? <laughs> no. Uh, he was like New York stuff. dinner theater. Uh, who who is is he? Uh, I'm gonna take guess. Ben Vereen. Um, no. No. I'm I'm out of guesses then. <laughs> it, and uh, he's working as an actor. Uh, kinda. Like he gets his money by doing like carpentry stuff because that's what he like started. Yeah, well, no, that's <laughs> acting. It's all acting, baby. <laughs> he's just acting like a carpenter, and they're just acting like he's worth eleven bucks an hour. Ugh. Yeah. I, I acted as a carpenter for 13 years. Yeah. Okay, so that's got to be a little... It, it's a lot. Okay, here's the thing with women. Your your brains are easily scrambled. It's it's really a it's a glass menagerie inside that skull of yours. <laughs> Whereas uh, I just have like a bean bag. Yeah. I mean, all, all, the, all the rattling around in the world is not going to do anything to my bean bag of a brain. But you women, it's very, very fragile up there. And when, it, when a guy just picks up... Especially at eight. Better to do it at one and a half or yeah. two than it is at yeah, eight. Yeah, because then you at least get idealized. And he says, uh, yeah, I'm moving across the country. Yeah, don't worry, you'll be getting some phone calls from me. And you guys have a relationship over the phone. Even when he's trying, it's like, it's horrible. Move. Horrible. That's yeah. horrible. All right. Now, I don't know where the, where the physical abuse stuff, I mean, the stuff where your masochistic comes in. And do you actually mean you like a guy to raise a hand to you? Um, well, like, I fantasized about that, but, um, I mean, like, it's never happened before. I've only had sex, like, yeah. a couple But all, all those all kinds right. of fantasies really are built around death and resurrection, abandonment and and reunion, and that's really your issue, right? It's about, it's about, you know, playing the child and resurrecting a relationship that has been abandoned, and, uh, yeah, that, that's where that comes from. And, you, really, you know, when people have been physically abused, that's sort of an easy track into that. It sort of wires that into their system, and so their attachment needs to go up. They're drawn to the person that's doing the physical abuse, and that then gets turned into attraction when puberty hits. All right, well, let's say this about Jessica. Um, she was not physically abused, and that's why she's probably not going through with it. She has this fantasy. Many women have this fantasy, by the way. Mm -hmm. I think it comes from being uh, the sort of less dominant of the two species you know what i mean mm -hmm. but you're not caring you're not going through with it so that's uh means you're sort of healthy enough don't worry about the fantasy and uh stay off the drugs stay in school and jessica's smart so yeah. she's gonna be okay all right I'm dad screwed her up a little fine guys that are, are available yeah all right adios elaine 38 Hi. Hey, but good good times Hi. good times yeah. elaine 
I'm so sorry you guys are sleep deprived. Thank I, you. I heard you on NPR last weekend, Adam. Yeah, yeah my, my yeah my sister called <laughs> me about that. Huge fan. <laughs> Huge like fan. My sister. She. I swear to Christ. Well, what night was that? Like Thursday or I think something? It was Saturday. Saturday. My sister calls me and says, uh, "Hey," um, and she starts talking about a car. You know, for like 20 minutes, and then she goes, "Hey, oh, you're on the radio now." And I go, "I'm on the radio Saturday." Oh, I said, "Oh, maybe it was that NPR uh, interview I did last week." And she goes, "Yeah, yeah, somebody called me to tell me to turn it on." And I said, "Oh, well, uh, I'll go turn that on." And she goes, "Yeah, but that's about an hour ago. <laughs> I forgot to do it." And I thought, "Wow." It was, a, it was a good it's, bit, it's, but it was just really it, odd because I'm not used to hearing you on NPR. But do you understand it's eerie for me to have family members also be fans <laughs> this way, that it's uncomfortable the way they swoon <laughs> over me? Your friend called her, told her to turn on the radio, and she forgot. <laughs> and she called to tell me about it. I'm probably also the only person in your audience that listens to um, you guys and Dr. Laura. Ooh. Oh yeah, Drew is so. Actually, you know, I know you know you actually have some of a similar message. You know, you tell people like not to be having babies if they shouldn't be having babies. Whatever. Disagree on yeah. What else to do yeah. with them? But yeah. here's the only here's the only difference. She gets eighty nine million two hundred fifty three thousand dollars a year more than Drew. <laughs> Other than that, they're they're both. And, I, and I, have a, I have a clinical degree and I practice yeah. medicine. Oh, yeah. I hate those. You know what? You know how I know when I hate people. I hate when uh, people get stuck on stuff like they call up. Every time they call Laura, they go, I'm my child's mom. Isn't that what they do? Uh-huh. The, and she decided that this was something clever she thought of. Uh -huh. And uh, it's like when uh, people call Rush Limbaugh, mega dittos, Rush. <laughs> oh, that is so clever. you got to write that down, Rush. <laughs> I crap ideas like that when I'm stoned. <laughs> Please. The hell's writing these things down? We'll call you and say it. My tubes are tied. Yes, and I'll send you out a windbreaker. <laughs> All right, so what's, uh, oh, you know, we got to take a break. But we'll, we want to talk to you. Okay. Who is this? It's Elaine. This, uh, Elaine. Elaine. All right, Elaine, hang on a second, would you? You betcha. All right, and, you know, you can turn on uh, Crank Yanker <laughs> on uh, M Whatever. No. MTV. Ooh. Sorry, Comedy <laughs> Central. Well, you know, we've been doing Love Line, we've been so doing much. Love Line yeah. a lot uh, yeah. this week. I've really got an MTV uh, hair up me. <laughs> Comedy Central, Crank Yankers, big premiere tonight. We'll uh, take a break, and we'll be right back with Elaine after this. Hey, everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Who called you, Drew, the old lady? Mm-hmm. What'd she need? She's having trouble sleeping. She's been sick. I, I banned her while she was ill. Oh. It's hard. You Three kids. You abandoned her while she's ill. Abandoned. You're out. Uh, you're out bringing home the bacon, Drew. Well, compared to you, I'm bringing home the bacos. Yeah, yeah. Call late hours a day, bacon. Jesus Christ, what are we doing here, Drew? <laughs> we gotta take a good long look in the mirror when we're done with this. Nude, nude this time. If I have to. Yeah, I always know it's Drew's wife because it goes. Okay, show starting. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, all right, right, right. I gotta get back. Well, well, then you just, you, if they do that, you do the same thing right back to them. Now, okay, okay love, love, show, love it, show, show, love it, show, one. <laughs> Drew, have you ever broken clean with her? You can't break clean, can you? Well, that was breaking clean. That was pretty fast. Yeah. That was pretty fast. Still, still took a little while. All right. She knows the phone, though, right? I mean, what I mean is like when you talk to your parents and you start, uh, yeah, I got, I got someone on the other line, they go, well, that's nice because your mother, it's like it doesn't doesn't register to them. You know, they don't. They're not done. You know what someone needed to do in like, uh, someone needed to do in like 19, 1990. Someone needed to, to, to get a convention of like every person over 65. Yeah. And it's, uh, all around, I mean, all around the country. Phone it's utilization, your phone etiquette and just, convention. Just get up there and go, listen, listen, hey, old timers. Yeah, over here. Okay, this. This is a fax machine. It, it's short for facsimile. You can send 
pictures and documents over the phone lines. Okay, so, so when someone says they're reading a the fax or fax it over, this is what it is. Number two, there's something called call waiting. Now, I hope you, you codgers are sitting down, but you can actually have someone on another line while you're talking to your grandchildren, and they can click over to them. Third, there's something called a phone machine. It's been out about 15 years. Now, when you call, that is a recorded message. Do not try to talk to it. Don't ask it how its day was. Somebody need to indoctrinate this because I still, still it's a little unclear with the a, older folks. There's another family. layer to it, too, which is when there's a message, uh, instructions on the phone machine, forget it. Yeah. The wheels come completely off the wagon right then. Well, when I when I hear my mom's phone machine, I can I can I can see, I can just see her reading off the box. <laughs> you know, I mean she practically says insert your name here. It, <laughs> but the thing is I'm you know like you know the thing I like too is uh, this is another thing. I don't know if your family does this when we go, "Hey, this is Adam. I'm not home." And they go, "Uh uh uh, uh Adam, uh, I don't know if this is your... Right. Really? You thought you called another Adam with the same number? What are the chances some guy would say his name was Adam when you were calling Adam that wasn't the Adam you were talking to? It's got to be slim. That's the thing. It's, it's, that it's not processing. It's, right. It's, yeah. Nothing processing. If, you, if, you, if they answer a phone that says, uh, for Adam, push one. For Lynette, push right. two. And forget that, it. Forget oh, it. No, uh, forget it. It's over. Yeah. No, their head They're hanging explodes hanging. like They're scanners hanging. right there. Just boom. <laughs> All right. So who are we talking to? Elaine? Elaine, yeah. 37-year-old Elaine? That's 38. 38. Sorry, baby. <laughs> they have hard one year. So, you just called to tell Adam he was on the uh, NPR? Say, hey, yeah. But, well, as long as I have you, I was going to ask you something medical. What the hell yeah, was ahead. it? I can't yeah. remember. Oh, you got that's me good. all nervous. All right, well, do you have a medical that, problem? Do with the Alzheimer's. I have lots. I have fibromyalgia, which is just uh -oh. making me crazy. I had yeah. a condition for... Um... Just, just know this about fibromyalgia. I no. In most cases, I believe strongly it's a sleep disturbance. Right. And if you get that sleep problem taken care of, magically the muscle aches go away. Just think about that. Yeah. It's, well, let me, I, and I, let me I explain. It, I got a bunch of years, and it came back when I started working 40 hours. There you go. All right. And, and by the way, Drew hears depressed and nutty when he hears fibromyalgia. And what do you hear? I hear nutty and depressed. Oh. I got a little, little, little twist, twist on, on it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Have a good time, sir. <laughs> there we go. Uh, what is that fibromyalgia? Just mu generalized muscle aches. Yeah, that just means nuts. With no medical That's depressed and nuts. reason for you. That's not getting laid, no hobbies, and uh, depressed. Good times. This, uh, there's no name up here. Who's on line two? Anderson? Memphis. Oh. You got to reboot Memphis. now. Oh, Memphis. There we go. Huh. I hey. thought that was the city. Yeah. This guy's name is Memphis. All right. Adam, first of all, here at God, I love Cranky Anchors and everything you do. And Drew, you the father I never had. Who? Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, a couple of days ago, I was hanging out with a um, hot chick that I have got acquainted with recently for... Uh, we sat through a movie, and I got, like, erection for three hours, which was, like, the longest I've ever had. Just just by the excitement of sitting next to her? Oh, well, we, we were, like, grinding and making out during the movie the whole time. Three Ooh. hours. Yeah. What movie? Barry Lyndon. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reference for the kids. No, what movie? It was, it was The Recruit. Yeah. Uh -huh. The Recruit. Uh -huh. I mean, the man, the oh, man well, show was in The Recruit, wasn't it? Yes, it was uh, about the menopause. Yeah. No, uh, ma man ponds. Yeah, man ponds. Yeah, but menopause, not bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, I tried to remember. Um, yeah, but then when I got up to go leave when the movie was over, uh -huh. my balls hurt like heck. I could, yeah. I had no idea why they were like really sensitive. And that's that is yeah. true blue balls. That's blue balls. There you go. Yeah, and it was like that for about. And until like half the day, like noon the next day. Did you did you ejaculate at all after that? Uh, yes, I did. And did that relieve any of it? Um, not that I could really tell. Because Are you okay I, now? Oh yeah, yeah, it's fine. All right. So uh, so did you, you dropped her off after the date? Uh yeah, well yeah, she had to be home. But right. By a dessert time. And then would you just beat off when you got home? I bet you did it in the car. 
That's right. Uh, I, I waited. Okay, I'll, I'll see you Monday at school. You hear the door shut. <laughs> oh, and it looked like a bomb went off inside the car. It's like, it, it'd take like a road map and squeegee off the inside of the windshield so we could see. Yeah, nah. Yeah, uh, it's like... like uh, did you make it home? Hmm? Yeah, you, you, made, you made it home, though. Yeah, Probably I took did. care of yourself. Oh, yeah. Good. Halfway up the driveway. Tell Safe in the yard. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, it's blue balls there, Memphis. Okay. That's all right. It happens all the time. Yeah. Hey, we haven't talked about uh, blue balls. No, it's 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 much more of an excuse than it is a reality. Yeah. We, we, people rarely get it, actually. Blue balls is out of vogue, though. Yeah, because it doesn't work anymore. W women are onto it. No, but I mean, it's so the guy that really gets it is sort of yeah, sure, yeah, right, right. It, do, it does exist. Yeah, yeah, it does. That was it. That was a, a classic description of it. This now is Danielle. Hey. Hey. Um. Okay. Me and my boyfriend have been going out for like a year and three months, and we just started having sex like a year ago. And <laughs> wait, hold on a second. Yeah. I don't know. It's just something funny, like where you go. We've been going out a year and three months, and we just had started having sex about 14 months ago. <laughs> it's like, you just start having sex three months after you met him. Mean, you've been doing it for a year, right? Right. Okay. Okay, right. and we lived together for a couple months, and we had, like, sex, like, a couple times a day and everything. And then he went off to live in Massachusetts, and we've been talking over the phone, and... All of a sudden, like he's saying, like when he comes back, we're not going to have sex anymore. Mm -hmm. He's saying that. Yeah, and in the first place, like I was the one who didn't really want to. Is he explained sex. why? No, he's just like, well, I don't feel it's right anymore. And and, and that's it. Just had a change of heart. Yeah, and it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, he, he's a religious guy. Not really. I was the one in the first place who's like, well, I don't really want to have sex because it's not right. And then eventually, I gave in. So it, it, uh, yeah, a year ago you gave in. Yeah. <laughs> hold on a second. Okay. Hey, uh, this uh, I got to talk about you, Daniel. Okay. Anderson, put her on hold. Da Danielle's got some some issues here. Well, it's uh, just about, denial yeah. about her religion and yeah. her sexuality yeah. because she she starts off with that sort of bizarre. The we're man. going out. Yeah. We're going out for a year, and we just started having sex yeah. a year ago. I know. <laughs> Seven eighths of the time you've been out with a guy, right? Which is a it's a, it's a strange way to say it. Yeah. And then, well, I mean, she you know she got issues with it. And then she goes, "I was the one yeah. who didn't want to have sex. And I was religious, and he wasn't. But, I, it wasn't right. It was wrong. But but then I finally gave in or something. And again, finally, again, that was a year ago. And finally, it was after a couple months, not after many many months. Right. So she, he may just be once in a while. A guy tries to pull that weird sort of preemptive strike card, you know, where they go, well, yeah, well, I don't want any sex. No, this isn't that. E either he has another girlfriend, feels guilty, or he's sort of found religion again, or sort of other, <laughs> other category, so whatever okay. it is. Let's grab back. Yeah. Put her back up here, Drew. I want to see what's going on with her uh, hey. retarded religiousness. Danielle? Yeah. What's up with you? What's your religion? Um, Lutheran. Lutheran. Yeah. What is that, Drew? What do you guys do? Christian. You don't eat shellfish. You eat shellfish. Something yeah, with fish. Everything it's fine. Mm hmm All right. So what's up? Why? Why the guilt? Um, I don't know. It's just I when I was older, I was sexually abused, and Ooh. so I do like to have sex, and it's just kind of odd that. He doesn't want to. I'm the one who. Well, we 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 gotta wonder yeah, but about that. Your... Has nothing to do with your strange sort of approach. But to what? Sex. Gotta remember, she might choose somebody with some issues about sex. Why'd this guy go to Boston? Uh, to do a band. His friend lives over there, and so he's like, "Okay, I'm gonna go." Over. How old is he? He's 18. To to do a band? Or to start a band. Trying... Start a band. Yeah. It didn't work out. Um, he kind of lost interest and kind of wants to come back to Oregon. How long was he there for? Uh, a couple weeks. <laughs> what? I don't You see how bizarre that is, and right? It doesn't, doesn't sound like the relationship's all that. If he's yeah. just sort of going off to Boston to hang out. Yeah. See if he can get a garage band started with his stoner buddy. Yeah. I think this thing may have run its course, Danielle. You think it's done? Yeah. Uh, well, if it's not, it should be. And, and you've got to get some therapy if you got sexually abused. Have I you had any? Yeah. Well, I'm fine with it, though. Like, nah, yeah, everyone for, believes they're fine with it. The fact is it leaves an imprint on your brain. Mm -hmm. It does. 
I mean, maybe you are okay. Maybe things. Maybe there's not really. No. What you just be sexually abused? How long were you abused one time? Uh, a couple times. Like I was five, so. Mm. Who did this? My grandpa. Oh. No. Yep. What did he do to you? Uh, he just touched me and. That's, that's about it. Yeah. No, no. What do you, what do you mean? What's the, I mean, it's not good, but I mean... No, it's not good. Hey, hang up on her. What do you, I can't take the uh, feedback anymore. Anderson, put her on hold, please. Uh, Drew, you say, you know, you say it's a couple of nine-year-olds uh, making out. You call, you call no, that no, rape. I, I, mean, I say nine-year-olds having gr- intercourse. Grandpa, your grandpa touching her is going to mess her up. like extra. Yeah. Grandpa's freaky deaky. Yeah, yeah. Grandpa maybe demented or something. Was kind of like, didn't know what he was well, doing. Who cares what his motivation is? Yeah. you got to be horrified as a five-year-old. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. five's a bad age for yeah, that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Drew, yeah. I, I, would, I would say three is better and... Maybe nine is better. Yeah. You know, like five is... Yeah, it's that's bad. Right in that sort of uh, crap wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. You got to get therapy there. And, and look, that's Grandpa, and God knows what his daughter or son was like. Yeah, yeah. All right, All right thanks, buddy. Well, I, the point is, though, people can go through upsides like that and not have major psychiatric right. symptoms. Yeah. I mean, that's the point. Oh, okay. we, we were saying you have to get therapy. I was like, well, you should. All things being equal, probably, you know. Okay. Yeah, good bet. Let's sell a call or talk to someone or do something. Okay. I wasn't going to do that. Let's talk to Phil. What's Hold Phil's on. problem? Oh, wait a minute. Here's Phil here. Hold on. What's his problem? Tom? He's got, uh, why can't he finish during sex? Mm-hmm. Keeps a boner for uh, five hours. Is that it, Phil? Hello. Phil? Yeah. You got a five-hour boner? Uh, no, I don't have a five-hour boner. Um, my problem is... Whenever I'm having sex with my girlfriend, probably within the past six months has been happening, um, I can't finish. Yeah. Like before, I could almost finish on command, like throughout high school and through college. And how long does it take this time? Um, this time, it'll take a real long time, like an hour, if at all. Mm-hmm. And especially, where the hell did the five hours come yeah, from? Yeah, where did five hours come from? I have well, no four idea. hours. I beg your pardon. I just, I just oh, read I, that Drew's in. brain's fried. Yeah. I forgive him. I'm going to um, strangle you with the mic cord, though, during the breakthrough. Yeah. All right, hold on, Phil. Oh, you're right. Me out of my misery. We didn't need to talk yeah. to you. Thank you. <laughs> we didn't need to talk to anybody. I'll tell you what we should do. Yeah. Uh, for the next uh, hour and 40 minutes, let's play How Long Does It Take Drew to Look Stuff Up in the Dictionary? You know, where's the dictionary? It's a fun game. We'll go out and find a dictionary. <laughs> I'll just yell out words, and and we'll time you. It'll be funny. Because I'm so out of it? No, just because uh, I don't feel like talking to people anymore, and it's always interesting, you know? Mm-hmm. And there won't be real crazy words, you know? Mm-hmm. We'll do stuff like uh, hinge. <laughs> well, it only took through 21 seconds to look up hinge, and then I'll just go to the next word. <laughs> See you at the day! <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're uh, over here in uh, New Brunswick. Where are we, Drew? Wilmington. Wilmington, North Carolina. Doing a little uh, Dawson Creekin'. Going to have uh, some of the Dawson Creek uh, crew in here tomorrow night. We'll take a little break, and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Drew's uh, got his uh, headphone cords hooked up in his chair, oh. so it uh, sounds good. Horrible. All right. We're out here in uh, Wilmington, uh, North Carolina. Drew is, uh, he's on the move. He's uh, looking at sites. He wants to know when things were built. He wants to know uh, what year the uh, statues went up and who yeah. they're of. And uh, nobody seems to care but him. Now he can't get his chair over the uh, carpet. Over the carpet. <laughs> he's stuck. But this happens every time I travel with Drew. He's, uh, oh, hey, what is this? Uh, I don't know. And we're driving the van. Oh, look at this building. What is this? Some sort of town hall? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Just George Washington slept there, right? Uh, yeah, look at that statue. Who is this guy? Some sort of Civil War general? Yeah. I just, I'm so amazed by the people in the South that they have, like, zero... It's like, uh, Civil War? What, huh? I told oh, you, yeah, Drew. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a fresh wound that is not know. healed yet. Mm. It's uncomfortable. You're bringing it up. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. A lot of them have uh, relatives, you know, fresh in the grave from this war. You got you to gotta mind your etiquette, Drew. Huh. All right, who are we call, who are we talking to? Never was Phil. <laughs> oh yeah, the disappointing Phil. Yeah. So Phil, dynamic uh, Phil. Yes. Yeah. Phil, you cannot uh, 
finish the job anymore sexually, and you were able to a few years ago. I have been able to up till about six months ago, right? Oh, okay. What changed six months ago? Medication? No, nothing like that. Uh, um, you uh, you have a steady girl? Yeah, we've been together uh, almost five years now. Hmm. Hmm. Now, how how are your feelings for her? Have they changed? Uh, no, not at all. We're uh, I'm gonna propose to her probably in the next few months here. And hmm. Maybe that's what you're freaking out about. I think I you're nervous. No, not at all. I mean, hmm. I, it was just kind of something that happened unexpectedly. It happens more when I wear a condom. Right, that makes sense. Right. What? Uh, why are you wearing a condom after five years? Well, just like if she's on antibiotics and she can't take the pill or something like that. Very good, very good. All right. Well done. So it happens more. So, all right, that makes sense. It's sort of a sensitivity Is thing. Does the fact that it happened kind of make you anxious and preoccupied about it happening again? Sort of. Or, like, during it. I'll be thinking, like, after a while, it's like, I'll start thinking about it, and then it's just, I think that kind of... Yeah, makes that makes it worse. worse. Yeah. Yeah. No medicine, nothing. No, no. No vitamins, supplements, anything? No, nothing like that. What yeah. about when you masturbate? How's that going? Uh, once a day, like clockwork, no problem. Why don't yeah. you hold off on that, huh? Hold off for about a week, and then watch what happens. Yep. Mount St. Helens. There you go. Good times. Problem yeah. solved. Start spelling uh, Phil with an F. I, I like that. I mean? Yeah, he's, he's filled. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be filled, not Phil. Yeah, all right, yeah. Drew. You, you knew the joke, though. Jackass. You know what I like about guys like Phil, though? It's like, uh, hey, here's, here's the solution. They're like, oh, no, whoa, whoa, wait a minute here. Once a day, like clockwork. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, stop that and figure that out. No, Nathan. That, that's all good, though. 27. Now, what happened here? You didn't punch him up. Yeah. Nathan? Yes. What's, What's going on? Uh, Drew Adam, I just want to say I love you guys. Uh, cool. I've been listening to you ever since I was 17. So. Oh, thanks, Nathan. Good times. No problem. Um, I've been dating my girlfriend for about two years now, and just like in the last six months, I've not been physically or sexually attracted to her. Why? Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But I see like other girls, like you know, like in the mall or at work or at, you know, at the store or something, I'm actually physically and sexually attracted to them. So you're not into your girlfriend? Not my girlfriend, though. No. You're not into her, though? I'm, yeah, right. I'm not, I mean, I'm not into her anymore. You're, you're, yeah. you're done. It's over. I, well, I mean, I know, but I mean, I've been with her for about two years. I mean... <laughs> How could you possibly be? <laughs> yeah, but listen, you, as, you, uh, as you get a little more seasoned, like uh, Dr. Drew over here, you start to realize that Things have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Jobs, schooling, relationships, friends, and uh, intimate relationships, too. So maybe this has uh, reached the end part of the trilogy. Mm. Okay. Is this, is this your first long-term relationship? Um, no, I've, I've had a, like a couple others, you know. Ha, did um, you have trouble ending those? No, because they actually got ended on me. They cheated, yeah. Well, here's the deal. This, it's your turn. For okay. whatever reason, you've, you've, this relationship has sort of run out of steam for you. And well, unless reality. something that she pack on a bunch of weight or she get burned by acid or something? No, no, it, that's not it. I, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I like her, you know, I like being with her, you know, her, you know, her attitude and what we do together, you know. I mean, mm. you know, when we hang out together and stuff like that. But when it comes down to in, intimacy... And being yeah. attracted, it just isn't there. All right. Yeah. It's okay. it, uh, you, are you living with her? Um. Yeah, I am. Ooh. Oh, you are. Ooh. Well, that's that's tough. You guys in an apartment? Yeah, we're in, we're in an apartment. Yeah. yeah. Someone may have to move out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she got she gonna uh, she gonna freak out? You think? Yeah, because she she was uh, sexually abused when she was younger and yeah, boy. Like, really low self esteem and everything. Oh boy. Uh, well, tell her you went gay. That's uh, that's really Adam, uh, Adam, Adam. I'm not like that. Well, I'm telling you, if you care about the girl's feelings, you'll tell her you're gay. That's all I'm saying. But look, you're if, gay. You're not, if you're not into her, uh, Anderson, get rid of Phil, uh, Nathan, would you please? If you're not, if you're not into this person, you're not doing them any favors. Even if they were sexually abused or they're fragile emotionally. You're still not doing them any favors just by just around. killing time no, with them. Because not at all. There is somebody out there that's into them. Right. 
and they need to find that person, and that person's not you. Yeah. All right. True. Yeah. We got to take a break? Yes. All right. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. What's so funny? I was just sitting around thinking about Drew and I were just talking about. Uh, How goddamn spoiled we are. Yeah. Yeah. We're in a yeah, kind of a cute little motel thing over here, but uh, not that cute. <laughs> it's a long haul. We're both spoiled now. We, we want to go to the Four Seasons. <laughs> I need a sauna and a colonic. <laughs> nice rub down. S- sit there, take a little uh, schwitz, work out a little, then hit those uh, down comforters. Yeah. Big old lucite showers. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I got it. I'm staying in a, I'm staying like a, we're staying in this kind of cool place, but it's cool for like a night. Yeah. yeah the floor's all uneven and it's a lot of creaking going it's on. It's kind of cool if you're sort of driving up the coast with your girlfriend or something, your wife. You know? Yeah, not not when you're just sort of uh, beating off in the sink, <laughs> oh staring at your sweaty mug. In the, By the way, did you ever get huh? yourself uh, wired with pornography there? Oh, my God. <laughs> this is a worthwhile story. Oh, I'll tell you, I, uh, I'm sorry, I think I have a brain tumor because of this. All right, so here's what happens, everybody. I don't tell anybody, but I'm leaving the house on uh, Sunday, and uh, I got a stack of uh, VHS movies uh, by, the, uh, by the front door, and I think to by myself... By the front door? You keep porn by the front door? Well, you never know? Earthquake? Well, or? if there's a fire or something, I, uh, I got to get that porn out I of the see, house. I see. I also have a sticker on the window for the fireman. You know, porn. <laughs> porn inside. Go back in there. Key. key, Porn key. Yeah, and I have the number, like yeah. people do with pets. Yeah. You know, it let the emergency services people know that if I make it out, they got to go back in and rescue my beloved porn. So, you're on your so way So, I got out. some porn by the... Uh, uh, it's it's in the den, but it's you know close to the front door, and uh, I don't want to let the old lady see, so I uh, do it quickly. But uh, I grab my favorite porn movie, big uh, big white label with just plain black lettering on it, and I stuff it into the bottom of my What's bag. What's it called? Uh, it's called Ultimate <laughs> Ultimate Lindsay. Yeah. Who's Lindsay? Lindsay Don McKenzie. She's Ooh. a big boob chick. Okay. Right. Yeah, she's hot. So I throw that in. I think. This is one good thing that's going to come from this little excursion. So I'm going to have some serious time with my penis <laughs> alone in my shotgun shack. So I got some making up to do. Right, right. You know. So I mean, I'm praying there's going to be a VCR in yeah, the room. Yeah. But I figure if it's if it's a little sort of cabin like we're getting, there might be a VCR in there. So yeah. I pack this movie. Uh, I show up uh, Sunday night. Uh, yeah, showed up here. Uh, yeah, Sunday night. Pull out immediately. Go for the for the uh, movie. That's what I was thinking about the whole trip. I pop. You know, <laughs> I got to draw all the shades. There's, uh, you know, it's like uh, drapes. fourteen windows. Yeah, yeah, fourteen windows. I got to I got to knock them all the louvers down. You know, I get all all primed. I pop get it the in duct there. Duct tape out and yeah, stick, stick I, louvers. I, I down. pop it in there, and it's like, w- what is this? I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching the gangs in New York. And it's scrambled. And, and it's uh, I'm like I'm watching HBO. So I I hit. I hit the VCR button on the remote, and it's like, then it goes kind of scrambled, then I'm changing the channels, and I'm like, well, i got to put on channel three. I think i got to put on channel three. And e- each time I put on channel three, there's the gangs in New York. And I guess I've been hearing a lot about the gangs in New York, and I figure it's on HBO. I don't know why, it seems a little fast, but I'm watching pay-per-view cable or something, and, and I keep switching around. It's fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy gangs in New York. You know, it's a I'm, hotel, and you figure there's pay-per-view movies at the hotel. Right. Yeah. I'm popping the, the tape in. I'm pushing it back in. I finally, I get frustrated. I go go for the memory whack, which is something I can do. <laughs> I can do that. Harking back to high school. Sometimes I even think about Drew. Uh. And uh, I go to bed. The next day, I try again. Nothing. So I go to the front desk, and I'm like, look. You got to send a technician up here. Something's wrong with this VCR. I'm futzing with the cables. I keep switching around, but a lot of VCRs are set up a little differently. You got to figure out how they go. So the technician comes in, and he's like, "Well, uh, where's the movie?" And I'm like, 
uh, <laughs> no, that's that's not here. That's not here. <laughs> like I FedExed it back home. It's not here. And he's like, well, I didn't bring a movie up to test it. And I'm like, you know, meanwhile, the movie's four feet away. It's stuff, I put it back in the back. At least you did that. And hide it, you know. So he's like, well, I got to go back down and grab a movie. I'm like, uh, all right, well, please do that. Because I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little frantic now. So he goes back, he gets a movie, pops the movie in, and he's like, well, the movie seems to work. Uh, the VCR seems to work. I'm watching the movie that we popped in, but uh, I think the remote's screwed up. You have to go without a remote. I'm like, done, <laughs> done and done. Just uh, clear out. Get out of here. Yeah. So he clears out. I grab the movie out of the, out of the suitcase again, pop it back in, trying to figure out how he had it set, and, and, and there I am with the gangs in New York again. And I'm like, God damn, they never stopped showing this movie on HBO or the pay-per-view or whatever. And I'm scanning through the stations. I'm flip-flopping the VCR button again. Eventually, I decide that I'm cursed. I get frustrated. I go to bed again. Next day, I come in, and uh, I walk into the room, and I'm staring at the tape that I pulled out. My frustration slammed down on the desk, and it says... Uh, gangs of New York and I, <laughs> and I realized that I grabbed the gangs of New York decided it was porn because it had the same lettering and the same color label and I'm in, in my sleep deprived haze refused to believe that that was what I was watching on the TV and basically fought for with it for uh, three days it's also a form of denial so you didn't want to believe you hadn't made it out there with your beloved yeah, then yeah. then it set in. Oh, yeah. now, here's the other thing that was funny, too, is each time I would hit the VCR thing, it would just go to scrambled whatever. And I thought, I was reading a sign when I was going through the uh, radar, when I was going through the metal detector and the, the oh. infrared scanner and all the stuff at the airport that said, if film. you have film, yeah. it will ruin the film. And I was like, the terrorists have finally won. <laughs> They've destroyed my porn. This... This x-ray machine has destroyed my precious porn. That was the only thing I could think. Gangs of New York is still on HBO, and my porn is scrambled. And I was fast-forwarding through the thing, and I never figured out it was Gangs of New York. Can you believe that, Drew? Uh, what's, what's wrong with me? Uh, yeah. That's a brain tumor, right? I don't know. Just weren't willing to make, you, the oh. assumptions you were operating from were wrong. And the oh. assumption in your head was... This has to be this VCR. Once I decided yeah. that I had brought this movie that was and it. that it must be the VCR, then it must be. Then everything else had to have an explanation around that. So yes. you're explaining away the Gangs of New York as pay-per-view and everything else. Yeah, it's like the dream oh. you had this morning. Drew. Can I have your Gangs Which of New York? The, uh, it was like the dream. Uh, Dr <laughs> Someone started jackhammering outside of Drew's uh. <laughs> Window oh at uh, 7 a.m. this morning, and uh, who? Ha, what in your it's, dream? It's what did it translate it, into? It, it's translated into a, a retarded, uh, like a, a retarded, like teenager had escaped from some mental institution, and it turned a trash can up right down right outside my room. It was beating on it with wooden spoons. That's what that it was it. And and taking two trash can lids together and smacking them like symbols. Yeah, that was at seven o'clock this morning. That's Very how nice. your was, brain works. Good times. At least you were asleep. Uh, can I have your gangs I, in New York tape? Oh, yeah. Well, it's out here now. Bring it back. I'm going to watch it. Yeah, I'm going to bring it back, but I, it's hard to watch. It's painful to watch now because it you reminds can see, though, me they're, of my they're, beloved porn. And there will be a porn named after Gang Hospital. They will detox you, no sweat, but you're going to have to spend many, many weeks in treatment in order to get this thing under control, all right? Yeah, but it seems like those are only free if you get in trouble. <laughs> no, uh, they're never free. Do you have any, any, do you have any source of, of uh, resources? Uh, not really. <laughs> no money or anything? The, you mostly, uh, most counties will have county-funded beds you can get right. into. So well, look yeah, into that. I have a list on that, or I'm looking right. to going somewhere else. All right, start calling, but expect to spend a little time in treatment, right? Where, uh, where do you live? Uh, the D.C. area. Uh-huh. All right, are you working? Mm-hmm. All right. What kind of job do you have, by the way? Uh, restaurant. All right. You a waitress? Mm-hmm. Yeah, good times. Yeah. And uh, you doing all right? You have a boyfriend or kids or anything? Yeah. What? The kids don't live with me, though. I have no. a right. choice to let them live with uh, their parent in laws or whatever. You kids, uh, you got two kids? Yep. All right. Uh, really? Why is everyone. You have to have two kids when you're yeah, a junkie, huh? Jen's Jen got I had the. I an ex boyfriend that sort of 
turned my life upside down. And yeah, Jen is a trauma survivor. Oh, right. Make no mistake about it. All right, Jen, get yourself some help, baby doll, would you? All right. Please, take care of yourself. All right, this and is no that. more kids, please. Kevin. Jesus What's Christ. up? What is up? Okay, I, uh, I, I uh, got some anger management issues um, that keep on knocking me down as far as uh, where I want to go in life. You're gay. True. Yeah, what happens? That's what it was. What happens? Oh, uh, anyway, I, um, I kind of fly off the handle sometimes on people. And uh, I, threw, I tossed a piece of paper at a uh, secretary, and uh, they wanted to demote me, and uh, I decided to quit instead. Um, demote you from what? You know, in our society, we have this, this um, we, sort of, we sort of dismiss people with aggression as, oh, well, he's just got a temper. He's just a temper. That's BS. It, the fact is something called effort, effortful control. The part of us that sort of takes emotions and sort of focuses them and decides what to do with them and which ones to express and not express. When people have been traumatized in some way, they lose that capacity for effort for control, and you have aggression that just emerges. And that's not, that's not an okay thing. It's just it's not right. I know, but what about the a-hole factor? That's where that comes from. Yeah, but it's not always because of abuse. It's, it's, or, or not, okay, not, not traditional abuse. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. necessarily physically abuse. Right, no, 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 right, that's right. All right, well, let's uh, continue uh, talking to Kevin over here and see what we can uh, figure out, Drew. Kevin? Yeah? You say you got, uh, they were going to demote you? Uh-huh. Where, uh, what kind of work were you in? Uh, loans. I do real estate loans. You do real estate loans? At 19? Yeah. That's pretty That's good. I uh, know, I know, I know. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I mean, you, you, you know, you may have some uh, anger management here, but uh, you, you've you moved along pretty good for a guy with uh, anger management in nineteen. I think I give yourself some credit there. Uh, I you threw, do. you threw the piece of paper at the secretary. Like, uh, why? You were angry at her? Yeah, I was angry at her. I didn't like the way she was talking to me. And, and I this isn't that, because you know, this is something you've had chronic. It's not like you're depressed right now or you're overwhelmed and you just sort of broke through in some way. No, it's, not, it's, it's just a recurring theme in my life. And yeah. something that I've been asking, that, that, uh, that I'm wondering about, is how much of it is, like you guys say, is, is damage control and how much of it is actually fixable? I mean, is this all going to be like, is this an inherited thing? Is this a genetic thing? Or is this something that, because of experiences that I've gone through, it can be fixed? And it can be fixed. Is, yeah. Huh? Listen, it's, it's, here's it the deal. It can be improved, anyway. If you're smart, you can fix stuff. I hate to say it, but it's true. Smart people can dig themselves out of their sort of uh, emotional ditches. And you're a smart guy, so you can fix this. He's 19. He sounds like he's 25. Yeah. He seems to have that. some... He's, yeah, but you, you have some insight. And, you know, you've, you've managed to move ahead pretty good in a pretty short period of time on the planet. You have some issues. Get them some therapy, look into some anger management. And they have all sorts of classes and stuff about this and groups and everything. Just get involved with that. You'll be fine. True. Yeah, Miss Valerie, What's you're the right. Puss on. Yeah, you're what right. Do you want? You're right. I mean, this is this is something that didn't exist, and then you know OJ uh, cut a few people's heads off, and uh, yeah. now there's one on it in every uh, YMCA, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he uh, deserves an evaluation to make sure it's not something. So again, depression or something else that's sort of amplifying all this. And if it's character logic, personality issue, then he's got to work on it. All right. All right, Valerie, twenty-two. Hi. Um, I had a question about my um, birth control, but also I wanted to know, whenever I have sex with my boyfriend, I get, like, super-duper wet. Mm -hmm. Like, like puddle. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you like, like, ejaculate? Do, what was that? Do you, like, ejaculate? I don't know. Like, I will be having sex, and I don't know if he hits, like, a spot in me that makes me just really wet, but it's before I even come. Hmm. Okay. And the birth control pill? And um, I'm on depo, and I was wondering if that's going to cause any long-term damage. No. Well, no. Think about it, Valerie. In this litigious society we live in, would they be able to give you medicine that could expose them to liability? That's you true, know, I, I heard that it's harder to get pregnant once you're off it. Than what? I don't Harder know. than what? Than if you were to use the pill or... Mm, where'd you hear that? Um, I was told that you just... You don't get your period for a long time after. Because I haven't had my period for like three years. Yeah, you don't get it as long as you're on the shot. But then when you stop the shot, things will kind of come back. Take about six months usually. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, but the, 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 the thing about the shot I don't like is that it can cause depression. And women, uh-huh. a lot of women don't feel that good on that shot. They feel kind of fatigued. But there's some women that can take it, no problem. And the uh, the lubrication thing, that's just how you're set up. Yeah, it's good. Right? It's like, you know, some dogs drool a lot. <laughs> right, Drew? Yeah. <laughs> I, and by the way, <laughs> well, I could... The, uh, I could not be down with a dog that drooled yeah, a lot. Yeah, this is the boxer vagina syndrome. Yeah. Huh. Turner and Hooch. <laughs> you know that Turner and Hooch, hooch dog? Cooch. The Hooch Cooch. Yeah, the Hooch Cooch. The, you ever see that Turner and Hooch movie? Yeah. Uh, by the way, we're done with the cops hooking up with the wisecracking dogs as uh, themes for comedies, aren't we? I hope so. I think, I think we got to be done with that. I like... There should have been, we should have never made, we should have made half of one of those. Let someone decide, oh, there's, this is a great plan. The guy with the dog. And here's, see, it's Ted, here's the twist. Dog, smarter than the guy. No. Yes. Oh, that's so funny. That's great. Okay. Turner and Hooch, that dog was just, it was just slobbering all the time. Like he was rabid and uh, getting all over the furniture and everything. I could not take that. I, I would I would not go for a slobbering dog, Drew. Was not, the dog? not in a train, not in a plane, not would, in a box, not with a fox. Would you, could you in a car? No, not at a bar. <laughs> I didn't read the whole book. I had to do something with a... What else could it rhyme with, with a car? With a fox? All right, Drew. Where are we? Uh, we are talking to Nicholas. Yeah, hey, how's it going, guys? We're good. good. I got a question about a previous caller that you had. Um, he was talking about blue balls, and uh, and I was wondering, you guys didn't really explain like the physiological effect of it. It's I mean, a, I was going out with a girl for like three months, and I wasn't getting laid. And I mean, I had to sit on like a cold coke every time I drove back from her house. Yeah. And <laughs> I was wondering, I mean, yeah. is it like damaging or? Not I mean, that I'm aware of it. It's venous and lymphatic congestion. They call, is that pelvic congestion? Pelvic congestion that, that sort of accumulates in the testicle area. So the 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 blood starts moving that way, yeah. and and things sort of get fired up, yeah, and, and nothing no, happens. No release. It just sort of gets pulled there. So like anything in life, like we were talking about before, anytime your body thinks something's gonna happen or needs to come out, yeah, yeah, and it starts preparing for something, even if it's adrenaline or something yeah. like you think. Uh, there's going to be a fight, yeah. or you th- or you have to sneeze, or you got to take a dump. Whatever it is, when something starts get starts get going and it never never gets finished off, there's a little pain involved. There's with that. a little, yeah, it's a little it's a bit of a of a curveball, so to speak. And, and it would irritate you, right? And and if you did it over the course of years, maybe to have some adverse effects. Yeah, maybe, but I know of no documentation of that. All right. Well, do a test, would you, Drew? All right. No, right, with you without your porn, we'll work on it. Oh, true. Why are we going to are we gonna have to go to a video store tonight? I'm going to keep my eyes open, <laughs> believe you me. <laughs> All right, we're going to take ourselves a little break. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. I miss that song. Yeah, it's my All American Rejects. Uh, I got to give that phone number out, Drew. No. 1-800-LV-191. We uh, have some of the uh, Dawson Creekers coming in here tomorrow night. Uh, I don't know everyone's name, but if you see them on the show, they're going to they're gonna roll in here eventually. Yeah, we, we got everybody except uh, Dawson coming through. Yeah. James Vanderbeek? Yeah. Where is that guy? I don't know. I haven't seen him. Is he on the show still? I think, yeah. Because if he leaves, he takes his creek with him. That's what I hear. Really? Oh, yes. Huh? He said he was going to pack up his creek <laughs> and go, and no one could play in his creek anymore. You think that's funny? I don't know. You need to go to bed. I know. <laughs> now I'm laughing at myself because I'm retarded now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How about that's phone funny. call? Phone All call. right, phone yeah, call. There you go. Uh, Liera? Liera? Hi. Hi, yeah. how do you pronounce that? Liera? Liera, like it's yeah. it looks. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been having a lot of anxiety problems lately. I had to go to the emergency room a couple of weeks ago because I had a panic attack. Uh-huh. And I was wondering if it could be some kind of chemical imbalance from the drugs that I've done in the past. What have you been doing? Um, I did ecstasy about nine times. I did acid once. 
mushrooms three times, and I used to smoke weed. I haven't done anything in about a year, though. It's possible. I'll tell you, ecstasy is the one that's most likely to cause this. And it has a real characteristic syndrome, which is you sort of typically start isolating first and get kind of ag agoraphobic. You don't want to go outside, and then the panic hits. Mm -hmm. Been having that kind of thing? Yeah, well, I've I've had general anxiety my whole life. And well, then so, I, yeah. I did ecstasy over a period of three years, maybe like three times yeah, but ec a year. Ecstasy, we, we know, damages the, the center of the brain that prevents this kind of thing from happening. So naturally mm -hmm. enough, you do ecstasy, your, your anxiety disorder would get worse. Whether or not it would also cause panic, you probably never know. But yes, definitely ecstasy is associated with panic. And when ecstasy causes that, usually there's a pretty good depression that follows. Are you even feeling depressed also? Yeah. Yeah, so well, that needs to be treated. Well, all right, so treat your depression. Okay. Yeah, and and, well, and look, if you're on, sorry, they put me on Lexapro, and I was wondering if that would help. Let's see. Yeah, Lexapro is an excellent medicine. It's not typically for anxiety. Paxil is more one that's for panic, anyway. And Lexapro is a very fast-acting, very good antidepressant. It's one of the serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Might cause a little sexual dysfunction, maybe less so than some of the other ones, but uh, you know. Hey, but good times. Richard, sixteen. Yeah, hey, um, I've been doing acting and stuff for about two years, did a little high school theater and whatnot. Hey, I think I've heard of you. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is, this is Richard from Eugene? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did, uh, you did Man of La Mancha, yeah. and uh, Annie Get Your Gun, right? No, no, no. That's and, and, anyway, I must be thinking of another it. Richard. Mame and the Death of a Salesman. Yes. Oh. On New Year's Eve, I did my first paying gig. I did some improv and stuff, and I was just wondering how uh, nice. how I'm gonna get into this and uh, how you got into acting and whatnot. So, yeah. well, I uh, I blew a big time producer. I gotta be honest with you. What are you What are you looking to get into? Being an actor, or doing comedy? Yeah, comedy stuff. Ooh. Like comedy theater, stuff. Improv, that kind of thing. Who's lining yeah. kind of stuff? You don't want to do stand up. No, no. I don't good. think I'd be much good at that. But, you yeah. have some dignity. Try it then. Well, uh, you know, back uh, when uh, yours truly was getting started, when I was doing these improv troops and stuff, Drew, yeah. um, there wasn't really much going on on cable. I mean, Yeah. There, well, I mean, like, the whole idea of improv was uh, hadn't really gelled yet. People weren't even aware that Saturday Night Live was really an improv show. Well, they it's not really. It's more of a sketch show. Yeah, okay, all right. Right, but, but that's all there was. Yeah, that, that's, put together sometimes. That's all there was then. Well, here's the thing. Is the thing that kind of sucked is um, there was no Comedy Central. Right. I mean, there there was there was no Man Show, and there was no HBO, and there's no Whose Line Is It Anyway? Right, right. And uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Right. There was none of this Mister Show. All right. these sort of. Uh, off-center comedies that uh, exist in the realm of cable. Yeah. What there was was... Uh, Sitcoms. Yeah, there was, like, you know, Bosom Buddies. Ugh. You know, and, uh, and and as I watch when I get home to the uh, hotel now at 3.30... TV uh, Land. E ...every night, uh, uh, oh, the one with the two cousins and Balkies and Perfect Strangers. Oh. Really bad, crappy-ass network sitcoms. And, and of course, at the time, all of us were just looking at each other, going, "Well, we no one's going to hire us to do this, and if they do, we we won't be doing what we want to do. Mm. We'll just be reading a bad script and making asses of ourselves, much like we're going to do tomorrow in Dawson's Creek." Right? Well, why not? We did it today. Good times. Yeah. So uh, now, if except you're, by the way, they let you ad lib your script, yeah, which, which um, pisses the hell of out of all the other actors and actresses. Yeah, they're like, "How come I got to memorize my lines?" And he gets to say what he wants. You want to know why? Genius! Where's your seal? Now spin that ball on your nose. That's what he says to and, He goes, And play let, that let, line of kazoos. They, right. they let me say what I want because I got something to say. Is that what I said? Well, you said basically because I know how to do it. Oh, true. That doesn't sound like it. Me. wasn't. You said okay, it here, here's the point. If you want to get... If you want to do something now, you can create your own thing. You can come up with your own show ideas. If you're an improvisational comedian, there's outlets for this, or an improvisational actor. There's there's many many opportunities uh, via cable, and so the future should look much brighter than the sort of bleak, uh, perfect strangers future uh, I was looking at in the uh, mid to late uh, '80s. So uh, I don't know. Just keep at it. Do your uh, do some improv classes. Get involved with an improv troupe. There you go. Danielle. Hi. Hey. What's up? How are you? 
Um, my question is, is um, I have just lost my vision uh, this last June. Completely? Um, in both eyes? Completely, yes. Well, both. the first eye I lost uh, back when I was in eighth grade, I had a cornea transplant, and it didn't work. Um, Why? They, I guess it just didn't like my body. <laughs> Why do you need a corneal <laughs> transplant? Uh, well, I was born with glaucoma, aniridia, and cataracts. Um, but it wasn't like really bad exactly. Um, I could still see pretty well. Didn't, just couldn't see really small print or anything. But you know, going through and life. And iridia, no iris. Yeah, I didn't have any pupils. The, the, the colored part of your eye. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but uh, the uh, so I had the first cornea transplant when I was like. Hold on a second. That makes for a spooky BJ. <laughs> you ever have that, Drew? <laughs> Looks like a cat's eye looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I have a prosthes prosthetic like eye in uh, the right eye. It's like getting uh. a BJ from a Malamute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You've never done that with the dog? Good spirits about this. Yeah. So, well, so okay. Have to, so. All right, so what do you see now? Do you see light? See Can you dark, see light? All dark. Just dark, Whoa. just black. Oh, my goodness. And it's really messed up my sleeping schedules and stuff. I mean, oh, I've had 24-hour yeah. non-sleep, you know, because, uh, you know, sometimes I just can't sleep, and then sometimes I can sleep all day long, and just, I don't know, it's just been really crazy. But So, um, so the, the lack of light is screwing up the brain chemistry. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. And, I, and you know, when people say, oh, yeah, you know, tell, try to describe something to me, I can't even picture it in my head. I don't, I don't know, like. They say, do you see colors? I'm like, no. <laughs> but you did it one time, though, right? I did. Yes, I did. But at, since I lost my vision, no, I haven't. But if somebody says a uh, picture of, of um, a car. I try to, but it's very difficult. I I just I can't remember sometimes. Or I remember, but just it won't come to my brain. Like some, I think my somebody said I had like a brain lock of something or other, and I'm like, oh, no, it's not it good. Was, has there been some, some effect in the brain visual center somehow? Mm, I have no idea. Uh, I had a cornea transplant this summer, too. I, yeah, a cornea transplant, and they thought that would help because, you know, they found out in June that, you know, they had no idea why I lost my vision, you know, because, you know, I had pretty good vision up until then. And until so, June. Yeah, in June. And so they were like, well, let's do a cornea transplant and see if that works. <laughs> so they did that, and it didn't work. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, Danny. Have you, wow. seen a, have you seen a neuro-ophthalmologist? What's that? <laughs> it's it's a, really a neurologist that specializes they in eye function. on your brain, that's yeah. your eye, right? Oh, no, no, I've never you, seen You that. really should do that. You really should. <laughs> okay, this well, that's good, because I've kind of wanted to know. So. Hey, uh, I got a bunch of questions for you. Are you having any other numbness or tingling in any other part of your body? Mm, no. Not that I know of. Not that I've noticed, but it's probably happened. Have, have you learned to read Braille at all? Yeah, yeah. But I'm a very, very slow reader. <laughs> but you just you just learned that in the last few months? Yeah. Oh, yeah. see, that'd be it for me. <laughs> I just get a coffee can and go down there and just, like, please throw some nickels in here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's one of my plans now. Yeah, I was going to say. 20 vision. And, and do you feel, um, do you understand, uh, you know, Drew and I always say that uh, because of the radio, we can read people's voices better than we can if we see them in person. Mm -hmm. We can know more about the person. We just, we just we can feel it. You just do respond you, do, to feeling. Do you feel that's becoming more acute with you or sensitive? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely <clears throat> have a... Uh, Toned in on all my senses. <laughs> um, uh, uh, hearing is, I wouldn't say it's like ultra sensitive hearing, but you know, I, I can hear things I concentrated on more. And when I first lost my vision, like I woke up, this is the day that I woke up and I didn't know what time it was because it was all dark. And I mean, I just woke up and it was dark. <laughs> wow. And uh, I was like, you, have, you had an M have you had an MRI of your brain? Uh uh, never. So I. That's Danielle, you need an MRI. Okay? <laughs> you know? Doesn't seem like someone should be doing that for her. Yeah, please call us back, will you? Let us know what happens with this. You need to see a neurologist, all right? All right. Pro <laughs> promise me, promise me you'll I do will that. I promise you, because I would really like to know why. I mean, uh, and, and in fact, and your and your your attitude about it, your sort of indifference, you know, your 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 positivity about it. Mm -hmm. Certain neurologic conditions have that as part of the syndrome. They mm -hmm. call it belle indifference, Adam. 
Well, La uh, belle I'd say, uh, v- uh, no. Here's what I say. I say if, uh, if, if that neuropathy causes this jovial attitude, sign me up. What do I got, Drew? I sit around bitching all day. Is that... <laughs> is that I, would I have a... That is the grand pain in the ass. Uh. <laughs> yeah, just walking around complaining all day. Drew, have you ever had catering this bad on a set? Oh, my God. God, this food is horrible. What are we going to do about this food? Huh. Oh, my precious porn. <laughs> 3,000 miles away. Oh, my baby. All right. I, yeah. I almost, this, this is the big chat. I want to see you loose in a, in a porn store. You know what I mean? I, I'm like, I've never seen you in action in a, in a, in a video store. Well, here's uh, I've never yeah. yeah that'd have a that'd be a good cable I, show. By there. the way, you want to, I, I'm sort of like porn market I, I've never really been in one. You cut me loose in a porn store with a shopping <laughs> bag, with a shopping cart, and we see how many dollars worth of porn I can uh, dump in there. Shop in, in till like you <laughs> bust. Uh, yeah, you never been a never shop been till a, you pop. You never been to a porn store, Andrew? I, not I've never like you know, I've never been toured through one. You know what I mean? With this pro. I can have one of my guides do it, or I can do it myself. No, I'd, I'd really be honored to be uh, have the real pro show me around. All right, well, uh, when we get back to L.A. we talk about this stuff so much. I, uh, check my schedule. Not L.A., I don't know. Who are we talking to, Drew? Uh, Drew, you're getting punchy, buddy. Oh, oh, man. Let's go now. I'm actually, Danielle kind of flipped me out a little bit. Yeah, because, well, sometimes when people are nervous, especially girls, they... Yeah, but you woke. You don't. You don't. Uh, an ophthalmologic problem, an eye problem, doesn't cause you don't wake su- up. sudden blindness. It's a, you know, a little, a little more gradual. Well, why That's isn't not she blackness. getting CAT scans? I mean, isn't anybody, even the even the it, worst HMO, giving her a CAT scan? I she's can't. Blind. She's had a doctor. She's been somebody seeing. gave her a corneal transplant without doing an MRI. I can't. Can't like it's bizarre. She's from Tacoma, not far from University of Washington. Now, I, I'm, I'm no doctor, Drew, but I am pretty spiritual, and I, I do know. Or at least I suspect that when you get the corneal transplant, you see what the other person would have seen. Now yeah, that you have yeah, the cornea, like, right? It's like I Spy, yeah, that movie I Spy. But, yeah. yeah. It's like having a little camera in your eye, yeah. Yeah, you see what the dead person would say? Yeah. Okay. Chris? Yeah. 19. All right, yeah. Um, I don't know, big fan, blah, 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 blah. I um, just thought I'd ask Adam uh, his thoughts on a good band name for a punk pick punk. Oh, oh boy! With the S word. He's punk. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, what? What? So it's a punk band. It's yeah, it's drunk punk music, I guess. Mm-hmm. There you go, drunk punk music. Well, you got to think of what's gonna look good on the on the billboard. Oh, not the billboard, but the marquee. You know what I'm saying? You had some. We had some names at one point, didn't we? Yeah. We can, we never write anything down oh, though. Oh my god. We but I mean, ones. you got your sort of. You know, you got your sort of. There's your free beer kind of angle. Which is, that's up on the marquee, so people come in and they see you playing. But then they're horribly disappointed. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then uh, then there's just a bunch of random, I don't know. I like, uh, I don't know, Drew. I'm too goddamn tired to come I up like with your band name. Stillbirth. What? Stillbirth. Nice. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. Or SIDS. <laughs> Is that sudden uh, infant death syndrome? Yeah. Yeah, that means you're hardcore. You can call the band SIDS, and they can get repulsed by it, and and then and then once you explain it, and then you explain it's after the name Sid, like Sid Marty Croft, it's but then there's, there's no one in the band named Sid. And you got that sort of uh, Sid Vicious thing going on. Yeah. How about SIDS? Right, the bereaved uh, is good, too. Is, is that a real name, though? No, no. That's good. And then my, uh, my friend's band was called Dead and Bloated, and they never copyrighted it. Oh, yeah, they could do that. That's gross. Yeah. Craven is not a bad one, either. It just means sort of depraved and cowardly. Yeah. Yeah. You forgot to get the dictionary, by the way. Yeah. The bereaved. That's nice. But none of this guy's, these jack-off 14-year-old buddies aren't going to know what it is. It's all right. Like they're going to know what SIDS is. It's mine, anyway. I, I don't know why I gave it. All right, I'm sticking with SIDS. We'll uh, take a break. We'll be right back. Buddy, love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. We're uh, over here in uh, North Carolina. Where are we, Drew? Wilmington. Wilmington, North Carolina, everybody. Doing a little Dawson's Creek. Uh, we're going to have some uh, Dawson Creekers uh, in here uh, tomorrow night, God willing, and uh, the next night. Although, you know, 
I'm prepared for some cancellations, Drew. Well, you can't blame them with the schedule. Yeah, because they, they, they seem. Yeah. <laughs> they seem what? They get picked up at seven in the morning. Uh, uh, and they go home and study their lines and stuff. Michelle Williams said she's up at one in the morning, no matter what. Really? She said she, she's yeah, up anyway. That's what she said. All right. Well, good times. All right, who are we talking to, Drew? This is uh, Derek, 19. Derek. Hey, what's up, guys? What's hey, Derek? up? Not much. Uh, I like you guys' show. You guys are funny. Thanks. But uh, I was listening the other night, and I kind of got perturbed uh, when Drew suggested that a young lady go see a psychiatrist. I was right. just wondering if you guys have seen a lot of success with psychology. Yeah. With psychology or psychiatry? Either or, really. Do you know the difference? Uh, no, you might want to clarify that. Psych psychiatry involves uh, medications. Biology. It's a, they're medical doctors. And, uh, yeah, I've seen dramatic uh, everyday successes. In fact, uh, it's sort of irresponsible now. It's saved millions of lives since the advent of the newer medications. It'd be irresponsible not to refer somebody to that kind of thing. Well, what's, uh, what's your angle, Derek? I just... I met a few people that were on psych drugs, and they seem nervous. They function, but nervously. And then I've heard a few horror stories. Yeah. Well, listen, there's always a few horror stories with everything. I mean, everything involved with medicine. Yeah, medicines, a of horror medicines stories. all medications have risk. I mean, that's one of the sort of problems with our culture is people think medicines have all the answers. And, yeah, if, if you have a disease, like a depression, which has a 20% chance of you killing you from suicide... Uh, yeah, it's worth some risk. It's a one out of five death rate from that disease. But don't be surprised if some awful side effect does develop because absolutely all medicines, all medicines have side effects. But then it just becomes a matter of degree. So what's what's worse, going through life with a severe depression or being jittery? Or, or having what people headaches or erectile dysfunction or sleep disturbances right. or a horrible rash or you know it can be, there can be awful side effects sometimes how do you guys feel about Scientology have you heard about it yeah I don't uh, I don't know uh, that much about it it always seems a little kooky to me but yeah, uh, and I I uh, I mean I listen I'm really fundamentally not against anything that says you know read a book and improve your life and I don't know what the tenets are of of Scientology. What are, what are like the fundamental, what are the three basics of Scientology? Well, they were making some sense to me. I don't know about three basics, but they were saying like psychology or psychiatry or psychology. It's like pretty much like an enemy to anybody's sanity. It's just making them more insane. Oh, well, that's uh, retarded. But Any, anytime, what's number two? anytime anybody tells you that you should have an us them mentality, whether it's a cult or whatever, you should come in with us, and together we'll, you know, we'll, we'll love you, and don't let anybody else. You know, the outside is a dangerous place, but with us, you're, you're accepted and loved. That, that's, well, a, that's always, a always a red flag. That's always a red flag. Yeah. What else do they tell you? Um, I don't know, a few things, but they were making right. sense with the psychiatry thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, sense to who? You? Yeah. Oh, you're 19. You're in junior college. I'm a sensible person. Yeah, barely. I've been talking to you for two minutes. I'm not impressed. What do you do? Damn, that's harsh, dude. What do you do? I go to school. I'm going to be a nurse, and uh, no. I, I work construction right now, putting in floors. No. No. You put in doors? Floors. Floors. What kind Ooh. of floors? Maybe he does a terrazzo. Uh, hardwood floors? You do hardwood flooring. That's right. That's that's good. You know, the uh, tongue and groove variety? Yeah, yeah. Ooh. All right. And uh, yeah, you, what do you do, run the, the drum sander? Hey, you just said you're not against anybody trying to do self-improvement, but then you called it retarded. What Does he run that? a drum sander? Do you run the drum sander or not? No, That's I've, really I've the big heard, question. I've never heard of a drum sander. Never heard of a drum sander and you do hardwood flooring? That's right. Huh. I saw pre-finished. Oh, you do the pre-finished stuff. Oh, <laughs> one of those guys. But and you're going to junior point. college. Yeah, pre finished guy. We had a name for those guys when what, uh, I was doing hardwood floor. What? What'd you call them? Pussies. <laughs> so, no, was, we didn't have a name for those guys. All right. But there was no pre finished back in the day. Oh, yeah. And yeah, we you... did it the man's way. Ah. I'd have to cut the tree down. That's why you said tongue and groove. You didn't know what you were talking about. Yeah, pre finished stuff should have tongue and groove, too, though. 
Okay, listen. I have, like, how many people have called this show and said they worked in the trades over the years? A hundred? Yeah. And then I've asked them just rudimentary questions about their so-called trade that they ever had an answer for. Not a good one. <laughs> well, what is that, Drew? I don't know. All right, listen. Go do your Scientology. Be Yes, I agree with Drew. Anytime they tell you something is bad and you need to take up with us, then it's whatever starts. it is, whether you're, it's a, whether the president of Iraq tells you that, yes. or the Davidian, uh, what was the Branch Davidians, right. or the uh, who are the guys, the aliens guy, the, the I thought those were them, or Jones, uh, Jim Jones, Jim Jones, or Jones it when is. everybody tells you that, that is a very serious, yeah, Raylians, Raylians, yeah, that, that is really, really playing into. Uh, human psychology is in ways that is extraordinarily manipulative and uh, destructive. Yeah, but if you want to read a book that has a picture of a volcano on it and <laughs> figure out a way to interlock your inner strength <clears throat> or unlock your inner strength, so, you know, so be it. Knock yourself out. But these are all just shortcuts for whatever work you need to do emotionally. Thank you. Anthony. Yo. Hey, what's going on? Not much, man. Go ahead. Um, me, huh? Oh, Here we God. go, buddy. I'm thinking bogus already. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. first time, long time. All right. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of curious if you can get AIDS from going down on a girl. Uh, it's that. Like an hour it's or two. Ooh, an hour or two. Three. You deserve four. AIDS for going down for an hour or two. <laughs> You're throwing the curve hey, off for but, the rest of us. What do you say? But I just got know. word word through that um, <clears throat> this girl possibly got AIDS. So I'm just kind of curious on what some of the symptoms are. Uh, um, no okay. symptoms, so you got to get tested. And I don't know of any documented cases of female to male transmission through oral sex. There's been male to male through oral sex and female to male, no, male to female from oral sex. No, anybody's swallowing semen can get AIDS. Oh, the, who, but, you, who are you talking and to? And theoretically, if you swallowed vaginal secretions, you can get it too, but it's, I don't know that it's been documented. And it wouldn't be as highly concentrated in vaginal secretions it's, as it would be in semen. You're not getting the volume. Yeah. You're not taking the volume. Thank God. But really, it's, uh, this is really God's punishment for going down on someone for an hour. Giving him AIDS? Yeah. Or just freaking him out about it? No, I'd say AIDS. <laughs> I said it's a light sentence. <laughs> All right, listen. He's not, he doesn't have it. That's why I'm kidding around. Yeah. But he needs to go get checked out anyway. Yeah. Just play it safe and... 21-year-old guy who's out uh, going down on people he doesn't know for an hour should probably go get AIDS tests every yeah, once true. in a while anyway. And there's certainly plenty of other STDs he could be in contact with. Yes. Let's take this break early. Now, have we licked AIDS, pardon the pun, in this, uh, it this is, country? It is, it is certainly a lot different than when I was in training. When I was in training, somebody would come for their first episode of pneumocystis pneumonia. We'd say they'd have six months to live. Really? Well, they could live 10 years or more. We know how long it's become. It's it's as predicted that AIDS is becoming a chronic illness rather than a death sentence. But it's it's still, it's not cured or reversible. They just hold it where it is. Right, exactly. Many, many times. Many times. All right. I mean, if you got the money to get these. Uh, By the way, I want an apology cocktail. from Spin Magazine, all those people that, uh, oh, I don't want to get into it. All those jack-offs that said uh, HIV, HIV didn't exist and it was invented by some... Oh, for Christ's sake. I know. But this is the thing with all the... Uh, this this uh, this is this thing with all the tards with the uh, their, uh, retarded theories and all the faggoty actors who claim they're going to leave the country if a Republican is elected and all these people that sort of make these big brash declarations and then never follow up with them. Pussies. That was Alec Baldwin. Adam. All of you. Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin, though, is a dear, dear, dear friend. <laughs> oh. So please, we've got to cut him some slack. Do you hey, own a ranch me. in Ojai? Call me on the uh, cell phone the other day. He's a huge fan of this show. He listens now? He listens uh, all the time. He re recites. You know what he recited uh, back to me? He, uh, he called me and he said, uh, A mason jar with a, with a uh, bagel taped to the end of it filled with crap. Hump that? And I was like, huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> wow, That's that... what you said to the guy who wanted anal sex, but his girlfriend wouldn't give it up, and he wanted to know what it felt like. Wow. And I was like, wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, thanks, Alec. All right, so he can stay. All right. The rest yeah. of you leave. We'll be back. Buddy, that's the show. Thanks for uh, listening. Uh, 
hopefully we'll have uh, some of the cast of Dawson's Creek uh, in here out in the, uh, North Carolina tomorrow night. And I want to thank uh, Alex, the engineer out here, for doing a great job and bringing us donuts. Happy and, birthday uh, to him. Happy birthday to Alex and uh, Engineer Anderson for working a little OT over in Los Angeles. So, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. You slamming drugs? Yes. What do you shoot? Um, heroin. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.